All right, I just double checked really quickly on my phone there, Safari. And it is Kevin Smith. He's a film director, and I'm sure he has many other things. Probably has written books and stuff like that. <coughs> Regardless, he follows more of an independent style with producing his movies, putting the content out he wants to put out, and not caring what others say. So, let me get into how he described and when he shared, and it's funny, this was on the Joe Rogan experience, talking about his last day with his father. He, he described it as a family meetup where the entire family, his family has a met up in a group setting in a long period of time. And his father, he could tell, was having a great time at the dinner, because it was at a dinner setting. And ultimately, he noticed that's what his father really wanted to see, was just happiness between all of his family members. And so, he had a good time. Kevin, his son, went home and then got a call later from his brother saying that his father was now in the hospital and the tone of his brother's voice said the tone of his father his brother's voice made it clear that his father was soon going to pass and the way Kevin described it in the end in conclusion was his father and this is a very brief description Kevin went in a much more detailed description than really resonated and connected with me and got me thinking about this several days later that he described his father as a man that abided by the systems whether it's through society norms whether it's through social customs whether it's through playing the life safe throughout, throughout one's journey man who was Mr. Nice Guy, Mr. Pleasing, Mr. Do Everything Right, Don't Take Risks, that's what it kind of sounded like, and at the end of it, he was talking about how his brother said that his father passed screaming, he died screaming, meaning that he died in pain, and it was an eye-awakening experience for Kevin in the sense that just because you abide by what's considered the conventional way, you're Mr. Nice Guy, you're a genuine great human being, does not guarantee that you will have an easy passing into whatever is the next phase or completely ends from there being death and that was interesting for me to hear about and just the way he articulated it and then related to how he currently goes about his current life with just doing things that he wants to and to do on his own agenda and he used his example of going the independent film route and not having all of these different characters butting in with their different ideas on how to manipulate the script or manipulate the whole movie itself. And I found it really interesting. And if you ever get a chance, certainly look it up. It was Kevin Smith on the Joe Rogan Experience. I'm sure you could just type in Kevin Smith. Maybe his thoughts on life or... Kevin Smith, thoughts on his father passing. It was very interesting. And again, that's why I like podcasts in that type of a setting, long format, where you can just genuinely hear authentic human thoughts, emotions, perspectives, mindsets, beliefs, without having to feel like they have to be somebody in the moment and come across as a certain type of person. So it's something I've definitely been thinking about the past couple days with life decisions. And 
in that there's no guarantee you'll have a painless death <laughs> based off of abiding by the rules, playing by the rules. So another piece to think about and expand on and come back to sometime in the future, that's for sure. I have evolved again my speech that I'm going to do in a Toastmasters. I get to film it. I want to film that here. I might do that. Even though it is 1230 in the morning. Heck, why not? Let's do it. When I get home to my apartment here, I'm going to film it and see what the product gets turned out. We'll see. Let's see how it comes to fruition. And let's... I'll say it for a third time. Let's see how sharp my brain is right now, this this early in the morning. We can go from there. Daily Xanon 194 to continue momentarily. Peace. What is good Z Nation? Like I said, I'm gonna follow through and do my practice speech for my first Toastmasters speech this coming Thursday, number one. I went number one. Number one, the icebreaker. The title of my speech is a six word story on my life. To begin, I would like to address it in the nature that I actually be in the room when I will be doing this speech. I will be called upon, I'll come up to the podium. I will say, Madam Toastmasters, guests, members, My life can be described in a story with six words. The six word story was started by Mr. Ernest Hemingway, an American novelist who was once challenged on the ability to write a six word story. He came up with, for sale, baby shoes never worn. Well, my six word story starts with four words to begin with. Humorist, observationist, being. A humorist slash observationist being. A humorist, humorist slash observationist being. There you go, that's four words right there. You're probably wondering what exactly is a humorist being? or what exactly is an observationist being. You're probably also wondering who the heck would give this kid the title, humorous slash observational being. In case you haven't really figured it out yet, I'm not from this neck of the woods, being Florida. I was born into humor slash observational royalty. December 3rd, 1993, on a Friday, 2 10 p.m., Providence Hospital, Anchorage, Alaska. The humorist in me can be accredited to my dad's side. My father, Alan Lee Clemens, has lived the majority of his life as a clown. I'm gonna pause it here real quick because I need a prop. Take number seven of my Toastmaster's number one speech. Madam Toastmaster, Members and guests, I would like to tell you about my six word story of my life up to this point. The six word story became popularized from the American novelist, Ernest Hemingway. But for my six word story to work, it begins first with four words. Humorist slash observational being. You're probably wondering what exactly is a humorist? What exactly is an observational being? And who would give this title to a kid like me? In case you haven't realized yet, I am not from this neck of the woods being Florida. I was born into humor slash observational royalty on a Friday, 2 10 p.m., December 3rd, 1993, Providence Hospital, Anchorage, Alaska. The humorist in me can be accredited to my father. Alan Lee Clemens, who is a known clown for most of his life, instilled in me the phrase, Sonny boy, in order for you to be here, you cannot be there. In order for you to be there, you cannot be here. 
He also instilled in me a phrase when something goes completely over my head. Hit parade on the stethoscope. And her phrases like these, observing, listening, taking in his approach on life with humor. It's because of this, I carry a clown nose with me wherever I go. I've been doing this for years. Not exactly sure how many, five or six, I'd like to say. The observationist in me can be attributed to my mother, Janet Francis Clemens. She's an observational historian for the National Park Service. Growing up in Anchorage, Alaska for 18 years, I lived a city boy lifestyle, went to a kindergarten titled Clever Kids. My Alaskan experience was done through commercial fishing, three summers where I would have freshly caught Alaskan red salmon every night and see pristine rosy pink sunsets every time I was either on the water or the beach. My first job I ever had was in the National Park Service, the same building my mother worked at. There I met a core group of human beings made an impact on me. First co-worker would be Mr. Kevin Feeney. Kevin Feeney, a man from Boston, Massachusetts, so he had a thick muzzled Bostonian accent to where to where we were where whatever to where whenever we were talking about us having a night on town or him having a night on the town I could never fully decipher whether or not he saw 20 bears or he drank 20 bears. The other co-worker would be Mr. Harry Wright. Harry Wright up until this point is the first and only man I've ever seen drink buttered milk from a carton, straight from a carton. Also utter the words, I even wrote this down when he said it because I was just in shock at the time. I even dream about buttermilk in my sleep. The man was dead serious. Besides the point, the memory I'd like to share about him is when my Uncle Wayne was visiting me at work for the first time, visiting from North Dakota saw Harry Wright's name tag on his cubicle. Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T was the spelling. My uncle saw perfect opportunity to strike in the form of humor. Went up to Harry, shook his hand, looked him dead in the eye, wobbled a joking finger, and said, Harry Wright! There are the moments like these growing up that uh, helped instill a humor being inside of me, but I knew I needed to build upon observationist being in me. After graduating high school at 18 in Anchorage, Alaska, I decided to do this through travel. I lived and went to school in Arizona. I then lived and went to school in Australia. I now reside in Altamont Springs. Now, the humorist and observationist in me needs to point out something that you folks might not see in the deep depths of the sea of my story. My life revolves around the theme, the letter A. To break it down, I am Alex, A. I lived and grew up in Anchorage, Alaska, A. I then lived in Arizona, A. I then lived in Australia, A. And now I reside in Altamont Springs, A. What's next? Argentina or Albania? That'll be a future debated speech. I've also tried to expand my life outside this theme, and I'll ask myself, Alex, who is your favorite celebrity crush? I'll then say in my mind, Jessica, and then I'll take a double check and then finish with Alba. A, it is through these humorous observational experiences that I have developed a unique prescription of glasses to view life from giving me self-awareness that I want to spend my time in environments around people in activities that, div that give me the most value back to create the best version of myself, which is why I'm here at Toastmasters this morning, talking in front of you to become a six-word story. Truly remarkable humor slash observational being, Madam Toastmaster. Oh!